In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and forever into the age, all ages, amen. Welcome back, everyone. This is the uh, tenth and final uh, talk that we have on the Orthodox Creed. Um, and we will, uh, God willing, discuss the last part relating to the, we confess one baptism for the remission of sins in the life of the coming age. And uh, according to the church teaching, we're born more than once, and actually we die more than once, and uh, hopefully we will rise more than once. And we'll talk about um, the different births, deaths, and resurrections that we find in scripture according to the teaching of the church. Um, <clears throat> so let's jump into it. Uh, this is uh, what we will discuss today, and I color-coded it based on um, the different parts that we'll talk about, and hopefully we'll have um, some like a graphic to kind of put all of these pieces together. So if you can bear with me relating to all this different terminology uh, that we'll discuss. <clears throat> so um, first we continue the theme of the oneness that we saw last time. When we say we confess one baptism for the remission of sins, it's related to the one holy Catholic and apostolic church that we, we spoke of in the part of the creed just before this. And it's a logical pr progression um, because um, this is actually the fourth time that the church uses the term one in the creed. Uh, if you remember, uh, we started by saying we believe in one God, uh, God the Father, the Pantocrator. Uh, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. And here in this first verse from 1 Corinthians, um, St. Paul says, by one spirit, one Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, which is the church, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into uh, one spirit. <clears throat> and um, this follows what St. Paul also says in Ephesians chapter 4, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And basically, when the church says we confess one baptism, there's, there's two main explanations for this term. The first one is that there's only one baptism found in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, um, meaning um, the Christ, the, the, the baptism that our Lord Jesus Christ has given, um, is, is a means by which we are joined to his one body. Um, and we can, can't be a member of the church without this uh, baptism. Um, <clears throat> as the Lord says in the end of the gospel, according to St. Mark and in other places, he who believes and is baptized uh, will be saved. Um, so that's, that's the first explanation that we say uh, we confess one baptism. The other explanation is that um, we believe that the sacrament of baptism in the one church should only be performed uh, once. Um, and um, what begins at baptism is fulfilled through the rest of your life. Um, so when we celebrate the, div the divine liturgy and we say, um, we recite the creed and we confess we believe in what baptism for the of sins, it's, uh, we're reconfessing that one baptism. Um, and kind of like when a married couple um, renews their vows or renews their love for each other by telling each other they love each other. Uh, that's one reason why we recite the creed also um, to the Lord in our prayers um, individually and collectively. And even the church fathers also uh, teach us um, that they speak of the one baptism. Um, St. Augustine does this and compares it to our natural birth. And here's where we talk about the two births, right? <clears throat> and St. Augustine writes, he says, there are in fact two kinds of birth. Um, notice the color coding. One is from the earth, that's a natural birth. The other from heaven, that's baptism. One from the flesh, the other from the spirit. One from mortality, the other from eternity. One is from our parents, male and female. The other from God, our heavenly father, and the church, our heavenly mother. As the fathers say, if you don't take um, uh, the church as your mother, you can't take God as your father. He says, but both of these two are once and for all events. Um, and St. Augustine is not the only father who mentions this. He says, neither the one nor the other can be repeated. Um, of course, if you're not baptized, if you're baptized in a church that's not apostolic, then the church doesn't acknowledge that as, as, as a true baptism. So that's why if we have uh, a believer 
who is from a non-apostolic Christian church, and they want to be um, a member of the Orthodox Church, we baptize them. Um, but if they come from another apostolic church, um, there's no need, and, and we shouldn't actually um, baptize them again. And this is what the church says. Uh, we confess one baptism um, for the remission of sins. <clears throat> um, so some people have different opinions on, on what I just said, but um, uh, some Orthodox don't even consider to the, the other apostolic churches to be uh, part of that one church. And uh, that's wrong. <laughs> so the main things that we look at, well, as we have said before, is the faith, the faith in the creed, right? Um, uh, is it an apostolic church? And is that baptism part of that apostolic church? And then what does the person's inner life look like? Um, are they living according to that uh, apostolic church uh, teaching? Um, and if they are, they say, well, there's no, there's no reason to, to baptize a person um, if they are coming from, from that uh, background, because they have already been baptized in the church. Um, <clears throat> and well, what happens if you deny the faith and you come back again? Because that's what the church fathers were arguing. If you deny the faith and you come back again, you just need to offer repentance and confession um, and, and, and get uh, permission to uh, take communion again but there's no need to rebaptize, okay? <clears throat> um, if you're coming from uh, a non-apostolic church, like we said before, yes, you should be baptized in the apostolic church, okay? Um, <clears throat> so uh, the church also calls baptism um, the womb and the tomb, right? Because there is a death, right? And there is a birth as well. Um, so a baptism is not just considered a new birth, but it's also dying and rising with Christ, right? Um, so the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter three, in his discussion with Nicodemus, he says, unless one is born of water and spirit, here's the baptism, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, the salvation, right? And then St. John Chrysostom says, when, we, when our head is plunged in the water in baptism, we're like in the tomb, we're dying with Christ. The old man is buried and completely drowned. When we rise from the water, uh, the new man is raised from the dead. So this is this is the the, the tomb and the resurrection. Okay. Um, <clears throat> also, Saint Paul says in the Epistle to the Romans, he says, do, "Do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Therefore, we were buried with Him through baptism into death." that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall also walk in newness of life. So um, here is the, the concept that um, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, but that sin is drowned in the baptismal water. Um, and and we, we come out of the baptismal water a new creation. Um, if, ever, if anyone is Christ, he is a new creation. Um, and um, so, so the church gives birth to us a second time in the sacrament of, of baptism. Um, <clears throat> as St. Paul also says, and many, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We take off the old man and we put on the new man. Who is the new man? Is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, so that's the womb uh, and the tomb. And we say we confess one baptism for the remission of sins. Um, and, and, and so we come in repentance, um, but we don't get our sins forgiven until the baptism, to the bas baptism itself. And um, as we'll see in the next slide, we, don't, uh, we are not allowed the blessing of the forgiveness through the sacrament of repentance and confession, along with other sacraments, um, until we receive the baptism, uh, the sacrament of baptism. Um, but we have to repent before we come to baptism. As, as uh, St. Peter tells us in the book of Acts, um, in the day of Pentecost, he tells everyone, you have to repent. And then let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins. Um, and uh, so we don't have um, access to the blessings and the sanctification and the salvation 
of the sacraments, except by going through first, uh, number one, repentance, but um, the sacrament of baptism, uh, secondly. Okay. Um, and I think we've uh, touched on that in the past. Um, so uh, St. Augustine uh, explains this even further when he says the sacrament of, of forgiveness of sins is not accessible except through baptism. He says God only forgives the sins of the baptized. The sins that he first forgives, he forgives only to the baptized when when they are baptized. He says, well, what, how about after that? Um, he says, well, the sacrament of repentance of confession, but you have to he says here, he says, you have to be baptized first. He says, the sins that are forged afterward to the repentant whom he forgives, he forgives to those who have been baptized. Um, after all, how can people say our father when they haven't yet been born? And in the early church, they were not even allowed to, to pray this, this holy prayer, the Lord's prayer, our father, until after they were baptized. Um, they would learn it before, they were, but they were not allowed to recite it until um, the day of their baptism. Um, so uh, that's the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> now let's jump to um, the five types of death. Um, and we've already touched on the, the last one here when we die and rise with Christ in baptism. I put them in this order because um, according to scripture, the first death, the first type of death is when we um, die because of sin, because the wages of sin is death. There's a lot of verses here and I put them um, here in bullet points, and, and if you'd like to look them up um, at an, another time, um, uh, please uh, feel free to do so. Um, but we say the state of sin is death, and the wages of sin is death. And to be carnally minded, as St. Paul says, um, is, is death. Um, and, and so th that's the first type of, uh, of, of death, is um, the death because uh, we don't do anything with sin. Um, and if we stay in the state without uh, going to our uh, heavenly bridegroom and our holy physician of our souls, uh, then that will be eternal, that will lead to eternal death. Um, I'll, I'll explain more on, on the, the graphic when we get to it. Um, and, and this is what we call or the Bible calls the second death. And we read in the book of Revelation, as well as St. Paul talks about this in, in the book of Romans, um, where he says, <clears throat> the wages of sin is death. Um, so that's the second death. Um, repentance, we say, instead of dying because of sin, we can die to sin, or we choose not to sin, or we have the power um, over sin. Uh, again, St. Paul talks about this in the, the book of Romans, uh, chapter three where he says, if you were then, you were raised with Christ um, by seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, be mindful uh, of the things above, not the things of the earth for you died and you, your life has been hidden with Christ in God. Okay, meaning we, we died to the old man, right? Um, <clears throat> and uh, we choose not to return um, to sin which leads to death. So that's repentance, right? Um, so that's the third type of death. The fourth type is the one we all know of, is when, when the body dies. Um, on, uh, and each one of us will have uh, to face this. And um, some of these types of death you see in scripture uh, symbolized by sleep, right? Um, when, for example, when the Lord said, our, our friend Lazarus sleeps, um, but I go that I may wake him up. Here he's talking about which one? He's talking about the, the physical death here, the death of the body. Um, uh, so anyway, these are the five uh, types of death. And if, if we look at this um, uh, kind of uh, table here, um, we say um, there's the, so there's the first birth, which is the natural birth, right? And then there's the physical death, which is just one type of death, right? And then we have the first type of death, which we see is the sin or the wages of sin is death. And this is the spiritual death. Um, or the first death mentioned in scripture, right? Then there's also repentance where we die to sin, as we said, right? And there is a type of resurrection where we are for granted the forgiveness of sins, as we mentioned before, okay? So what does it look like here? So imagine your, your life on the scale here, here, right? There is the natural birth, um, 
which we all have, right? And there's the physical death, right? But there's um, what happens in between. There's other births and deaths, right? So the first one is we all fall short of the glory of God and we all sin and the wages of sin is death. So this is a type of death that happens before a physical death. What do we do with that? As, as we said, we have the uh, opportunity to repent and p- to be granted the forgiveness of our sins, right? Um, and then how does that happen? The forgiveness of sins ha- happens through baptism, right? Um, and then the, the death, the second death has no power of, uh, over us anymore, right? And we, after our physical death, we're granted the blessing of, uh, uh, of entering paradise. Um, so this is the, the uh, opportunity open for all of us, right? But if there's no repentance and there's no access to forgiveness, then we have the other alternative um, is, is the, the result of our inaction, okay? Um, uh, and we say also the ch- scripture speaks of the first resurrection, which is after we repent and we're going through the forgiveness of our sins, this is a type of um, coming back from the dead. Like in the, the gospel um, parable of the lost son, right? What did the father say? My, my son was dead and he is alive again. He was living in sin and now he came back to the father. He came back to the home. He came back to the church and to God. And so um, he experienced a resurrection. Um, <clears throat> and this is what the Lord says in the gospel according to St. John, most assuredly I say to you the hour is coming and now is because now the church is has this opportunity for all of us when the spiritually dead, right? He doesn't see spiritually, but here we're talking about um, this first type of death. will hear the voice of the son of God will live according to Christ and those who hear will live, right? Um, and then, this is explained further in the book of Revelation, where um, it says, blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. So the person won't go to Hades or hell. Um, And we'll touch on this uh, further. But um, what does this first resurrection uh, look like in, in the church? We say this is the process of sanctification also, um, because after we um, enter um, into the sacramental life after repentance or through repentance, we get power from the sacraments to live a holy life. Um, and as St. Cyril explains further, he says, as we have died a death like his, because we died to sin, so we shall also be conformed to his resurrection, um, because we shall live in Christ. He's, he continues by saying, it is true that the flesh will come to life again. We will all rise again, and we'll get to this in a minute. This is the first resurre- the second resurrection, sorry. But still, we shall live in another way. Um, so before we rise from the dead after, uh, after death, right, there's another resurrection that St. Uh, Cyril sorry, is, is speaking of. He says, um, by dedicating our souls to Christ, and being transformed into holiness and a kind of glorious life in the Holy Spirit. Um, so when we're living a holy life now, this is the resurrection. This is the first resurrection. Okay, um, so going back to um, our little <laughs> diagram here, right? Um, this is, uh, so the, the blue here, the, the, the blue sanctification. So after living, or when we're living a life of repentance and we're baptized and we get, grant the forgiveness of sins, we live a holy life and we experience a taste of the first resurrection, right? <clears throat> um, and, but there's another resurrection that also will be, um, everyone will experience the good and the bad those in paradise and those in Hades. Um, and, and, uh, but um, even though everyone ex- will experience this, not everyone is looking forward to it. <laughs> Why? Those in paradise are looking forward to it. And those who are working their way toward paradise, we say we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the coming age because they will ha- live in the second um, resurrection forever. Um, and, and that's why 
the, the righteous say, we look for the resurrection. We look forward to it. Um, and we can't wait. We say that kingdom come, right? Um, and um, uh, St. Peter explains this in, in his second epistle where he says, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and, and godliness? Like you, you should li be living a holy life, he's saying, right? Um, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. We're, we, we can't wait. <laughs> Um, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, the elements will melt in fervent heat. Here he's talking about the second coming, um, uh, more description as, as we mentioned in the past. He says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Um, so uh, actually, if you notice in, in the liturgy, this is the part of the creed that we chant. Um, and, and this is kind of like the continuation of the, the concept of eschatology, which we discussed um, uh, not last time, the time before, right? <clears throat> and the church put um, the second coming in the creed um, to kind of, um, uh, to put in our minds, you know, what we need to anticipate, what to, to be continued. The church is saying, okay, to be continued, stay tuned. Um, look towards the resurrect the second resurrection um and uh we need to be prepared uh, uh, of course for for this coming and to look for the resurrection of the dead um if not then maybe we don't have enough faith that that um there's there's a lot better things awaiting us um in the resurrection of the dead than the life that we're living now okay um <clears throat> so Let's talk a little bit about this uh, resurrection from the dead. This is what the, the scripture describes or the church calls the second resurrection or the general resurrection. Um, and St. Paul in 2 Corinthians, he talks about this. He says, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We spoke about the judgment, um, but there will be um, uh, a resurrection of the flesh for all people, good and bad. Um, and once our spirits return to our bodies um, that that were die that were uh, dead and buried, um, then will come the judgment. Um, why Saint Paul says that each one may receive the things done in the body, uh, reward or punishment, right in that body, right according to what they have done, whether good or bad. Okay. Um, and the Lord explains this again in the gospel according to St. John chapter 5, which we recite in the gospel of a funeral of um, uh, um, a uh, male. Um, it says, he says, the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. This is the re second resurrection. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, right? Um, those who are in paradise to heaven and those who have done evil those who are in Hades, to the resurrection of condemnation, right? Um, and uh, this, this, is, um, this is what we call the, after the second coming will be the judgment day. And then after judgment day, those in paradise will go to heaven and those in Hades will uh, go to hell. Um, and uh, so those going to heaven, we say this is the life of the age to come. This is eternity, right? As St. John writes in the second to last chapter of um, the Bible, he says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth and God shall wipe away from them every tear from their eyes and there shall no longer be death, right? Um, so death and Hades are thrown into uh, the... Uh, the pit of, uh, of fire, right? And there will be no mourning, no crying, no pain um, for the first things went, went away. And the one sitting on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. Um, and so this is what we're looking forward to. Um, so let's kind of summarize again, <laughs> right? Um, so here we've already sp spoken of these, um, just the baptism, which I didn't mention before, there's a birth and a death, right? Um, which is a second birth, um, and it's a type of death and resurrection, right? And then um, we have the general resurrection, which the church calls the second resurrection, 
Um, and then there's also um, the second death, which we don't want to have part of. Um, and there is the eternal life, which is also the, the life of the coming age to come. Okay, so putting all of this uh, together, you see we have um, the progression of those in paradise after the general resurrection, then heaven will be open, right? Um, and, and all those worthy will enter. Um, and those not, those when Hades will, will go to the everlasting uh, fire, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> so um, we anticipate and we look forward to, to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the coming age. And we shouldn't um, be worried or distracted, um, but we look long for with anticipation the end of, of this world and of this life, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the coming age. <clears throat> and um, in the beginning of the creed, right, we, we started by saying, truly I believe, right, in all of these things. Um, and uh, when the Lord says, I am coming quickly, um, we, we respond by saying the same thing. We, we respond by saying, uh, saying amen, right? And that's the last word of the creed um, because, because we're proclaiming, I believe, right? And that's why in the liturgy, you'll see um, we're constantly either saying, I believe, uh, amen. Uh, this is so in truth, like we're confirming um, our faith and we're confirming that what is happening, we believe to be true. And so this last word of the creed, amen, is, is not haphazard. Um, but when the Lord says, I'm quickly, we say, amen. Like, this is so in truth. Um, so be it. Um, and even the, what's the last words that the people recite at, at the end of, of the, the Orthodox service, we say, amen, ese shopi, or um, amen, so be it. Let it, let it be. Um, <clears throat> let all of these things uh, come to pass. Um, and when the Lord says, I'm coming quickly, we say, come, Lord, Je Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come into my life, um, so that, and come to me quickly, that I may feel your presence, and I may experience the taste of the kingdom now, so I can taste the kingdom um, forever. Um, and this is granted to all those who ask, uh, because God will not refuse to give any good thing to those who want. We just have to prove our desire for it by obeying and, and repenting and, and following this, this small commandments that he asks of us. Um, so uh, we ask the Lord to continue us, to, to help us to continue to strengthen our faith in him until he comes quickly to us and takes us to live with him forever. Uh, and glory be to him now and from to the age of ages of men. I hope you enjoyed the series and we pray that it could be a source of blessing for those interested in coming to the Orthodox faith or deepening their, their uh, spiritual life in the Orthodox church. Um, and uh, if, if you'd like to share this series with anyone interested, uh, we pray that it could be a source of blessing and um, uh, encouragement to those who want to come deeper um, into the life with Christ. Glory be to him now and forever into the age all ages. Amen.